Aaron with For the Love of Tech here, bringing you a camera comparison on the Samsung Galaxy S9. With all these new features, tricks, and apertures that they're jam-packing into this camera, into this device, into this smartphone, how does it really compare to a regular still image when you're hanging out in the park? That's the question I wanted answered. All these low light situations and this, that, slow mo, all this other stuff, those are great features. But we're talking real life consumer using his phone to take pictures so I can go ahead and share with my loved ones, so I can save it, so I can look at it at another time. That's the reason I need an awesome camera. Stay tuned. We're going to take a good look at the iPhone 10, Pixel 2 XL, even the OnePlus 5T. That's right, the budget phone is going to get compared to a phone that probably costs twice as much. And last but not least, we're pulling the Note 8 out and we're going to see how it compares to the Samsung Galaxy S9. Stick around, we're going to dive right in. These are some shots that I took at the park. Now I'm going to show it to you. This is on the iPhone 10. This was taken on the Note 8. This was taken on the OnePlus 5T, the Pixel XL2, and last but not least, the Samsung Galaxy S9. Now we're going to compare the iPhone 10 to the Galaxy S9. The iPhone 10 on the left, as you can see, the shadows are darker, but the colors are a little bit more contrast, and the Galaxy S9 is on the right. Next, we're going to take a look at the OnePlus 5T. In my opinion, this picture looks phenomenal. It even looks better than the, than the Galaxy S9. And this is on the smartphone budget one. I think this is a this is really great comparison here. Now we're looking at the Note 8. This is my gripe. I think the Note 8 picture captures a more realistic and organic representation of my day in the park. That's what I think. The Note 8 looks better than the S9. And now we're going to move on to the Pixel 2 XL. This one, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, is the best representation of what that park actually looked like while keeping the colors contrasted and the exposure dead on. That's one thing that really drove me crazy when going through this camera test about the Galaxy S9 is it overexposed everything. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another camera comparison. Here on the right we're going to keep with the uh, Galaxy S9 and on the left the Pixel 2 XL. So if you just take a moment and you observe and what you observe is you can actually see the Galaxy S9 gives almost a little bit of a whitish tint in the top right hand corner of the photo. Which is like why do they do that? I'm not really too sure. But if you look at the Pixel 2 XL in that top right hand corner, this is the picture on the left side, you see a little bit more details in the clouds. These details are really important. Next, we're looking at the OnePlus 5T. Again, this picture, great representation, but I think the OnePlus 5T even whited out the corner of the clouds a little bit more than the Galaxy S9 did. Great color contrast in both photos, definitely for the budget phone. Now we're moving on to the to the Note 8. Look at look at the pictures in the Note 8. For whatever reason, the uh, angle on the Note 8 was a little bit wider. I wasn't able to get the clouds in there for you. But if we take a moment and we just observe the rest of what's going on here, it looks phenomenal on both pictures. This is Samsung stacked against Samsung. Last year's high-end 
beast productivity phone against this year's current flagship winner, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 against the S9. Now let's go ahead and move on and take a quick peek at the iPhone 10. And if you look, the iPhone even maintained more of the blue than the S9 did in the sky. This is huge. I think this is something that people that love cameras, that love photos, that love accuracy, you guys are going to value that. This is a camera test I did with the Bokeh. We're taking a look at the Pixel 2 XL and the Samsung Galaxy S9, our uh, main subject camera today. This is the Bokeh effect, also known as portrait mode in a lot of phones. As you can see, the Pixel did a far better job. This is in extreme light right above me. Uh, a couple of the other devices wouldn't even activate the depth effect. Um, the iPhone 10 wouldn't even come on for us. So the fact that we were able to get the Pixel to activate along with the Samsung Galaxy uh, S9 was really awesome. The Note 8, and uh, they don't have the front-facing portrait mode. And it also didn't uh, have that on the OnePlus 5T. All right, now we're going to go ahead and just move right along to a straight selfie. Here on the left, we have the iPhone 10, And on the right, of course, the Samsung Galaxy S9. I'm sure you guys have caught on. That picture is not going to change. Uh, it's always going to be on the right. So next, we're looking at the Note 8 which Samsung against Samsung, they both whited out those clouds, right? Which is a little annoying, but, you know, it's what their software does. It doesn't always pick it up. Next, we're going to go ahead and move on to the OnePlus 5T. Now, this did a really good job as well, but I think feel the Samsung Galaxy S9 was much sharper of an image and uh, even though it also whited uh, it didn't white it out as much the blue sky I still would say the Galaxy S9 is a better image here because the detail was so much sharper now we're gonna look at the Pixel 2 XL and this is just a really simple selfie as you can see the Pixel the selfie way better definitely better representation of what I looked like um, here's another photo comparison this is of course we're always gonna have the s9 on the right so I'm gonna stop repeating myself there but on the left we have the pixel 2 XL and I like how the pixel maintained those colors really good on the slide it is a little bit darker the slide was darker so that is a better representation of how it looked this is the OnePlus 5T what I found interesting is the over saturation of the colors of the green in the background it was they really darkened up those colors a lot in comparison with the pixel now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at the note 8 uh, this is another shot where you can kind of see all of the trees where you can see the foliage up there and the slide again we're Samsung against Samsung the slot this the slides pretty bright and I'm a little confused by it because the, the slide really wasn't that bright in person but the camera picks it up and brightens it up now we're looking at the iPhone 10, which, my opinion, is a much better actual representation of what this photo looks like. You can actually see, here's the iPhone 10, right? And it's a much better representation of what we're looking at. Now, let me come over here and let me do a comparison with the iPhone 10 and the Pixel 2 XL. So let's see what this let's see what this looks like. The right we have the Pixel 2 XL and on the left we have the iPhone 10. My opinion, these are the two best pictures of this slide out of all the other pictures that I've taken. Now, I don't mean to be a jerk, 
And I'm not trying to crab on Samsung's latest and greatest device because I know it's cool and I know there's great features in it. But based on what we just saw, I don't see what the big deal about this camera is. I've been playing with it. I've been moving. I've been taking pictures. I've been going in all sorts of lighting conditions. And I don't know what's so great about this camera. It's a one trick pony. This low light thing it's doing is pretty cool. Now, mind you, I haven't done my review on slow-mo mode yet. I will. We might have a two trick pony up our sleeves, but based on a regular day going through my life, going through your life, what are you going to be taking the pictures of the most? People, friends, events, celebrations. I just don't see a ton of use that I'm going to get out in my life of this slow-mo mode. But I'm going to find out. I'm going to do some comparisons and we're going to show you what everything looks like. In my opinion, the Pixel 2 XL camera is still the winner amongst these smartphones. After that, the Note 8, I feel, is a better contender than the Galaxy S9. And I know I don't care about low-light pictures. Call me weird. Don't care, Samsung. If you never put that in that phone, it would have never have bothered me. What I want to hear from you guys today is, are you using the low-light mode? What condition would you be in where you'd be like, wow, I'm so glad this camera takes pictures in low light. I'm thinking hanging out outside, a campfire, in the backyard at night, maybe if there's a parade going on. But those are like once in a while type of things, not something I do every day. So I wonder, was it necessary or was just the thing Samsung needed to do? in order to make a splash, trying to stay relevant, trying to stay ahead of the competition. What do you guys think? Let me know in the description below. For the love of tech, you know we are always doing a giveaway. Right now we are giving away the Samsung Galaxy S9, so you too can take these uh, amazing low light photos down the road if you win. And we're also giving away a Nintendo Switch. Don't forget it, I'm about to announce the details of when the giveaway is gonna be uh, taking place. With that being said, let me get a Roman numerals 644 in the description dash, and then answer one of my previous questions. Tell me what you think. That will gain you an additional five more entries into the giveaway. Who doesn't want five entries into the giveaway? I said all you have to do is subscribe and watch the videos, and you'll be entered. For the love of tech, namaste.